Hi, welcome back to Close Up. Our guest this week is Minister Faust. He has such an amazingly interesting mind. Uh, the conversation's going great. You'll want to hear this. Okay, so what I want to know then is specific incident where sure. you saw an evil and you thought, I am going to act against that. Sure. All right, well, and I will give you that. I want to say two things quickly. You're going to preface it again. I am going to do it because it's important, <laughs> because complex issues have to have complex, require complex understandings. So number one, the best response to evil is not fighting evil, but is rather constructing good that displaces the evil. It's like this tabletop. If it were loaded with evil, just loaded up with good, that pushes the evil right off. Okay. Okay. The second thing is that many people think that your commitment to social justice is somehow less than true or meaningful unless, you know, for instance, tanks were driven onto your family's lawn or somebody lynched your uncle or somebody punched you in the face and called your group terrible names. And I think that the, the third one has happened too. <laughs> yes, that may have had nothing to do with oppression. That may have been no. some kind of revenge for something I don't know about your background enough, but I seem to recall stealing somebody's girlfriend along the way. Could have happened. All right, but at any rate. Um, but the fact is that uh, we don't have to have had a personal comic book style, you know, this was the event that defined me. What we can do is, as a result of our faith, we can say we have a duty to make the world better. And I'm not okay. looking necessarily yeah. for like yeah. the big, huge, defining moment. I'm yeah. talking about, it could be a, a small yeah. moment where you, where you had a, a moment of consciousness yeah. where you went, that person isn't yeah. doing something that I see as right and I know that I should do something yeah. and then you had to make that decision. Well, I'll give, you, I'll give you a concrete example. In the fall of 1990 in Edmonton, uh, at that time there was a fairly active Nazi skinhead movement and uh, although I, I had no involvement with the local punk rock community I knew some people who were in it and the primary victims of the local neo-nazi skinheads were their fellow white youth who were in this case they were specifically punkers they were beating and and also there was a broad so artsy punkers is yes exactly were the targets and there was as well um, there was a broadcaster named Keith Rutherford who had done a story, uh, and you know, this is some time ago, but as I recall, he'd done an expose on a local man who was a concentration, card, a con concentration camp guard. And um, so these, these uh, unfortunately, horribly, some of these neo Nazis attacked him. In fact, one blinded him. This, he was an old man, Keith Rutherford. You might want to double check that name, by the way. This has been a long time since I uh, looked at the story. But so several of us, you know, I was asked, would you take part in a local anti-fascist campaign? And I mean, the other thing was that they, these Nazis were involved in things like desecrating Jewish cemeteries and that kind of thing. So, so I was asked, would you be involved with some of this? Uh, we're going to put up posters and so forth. I said, sure, of course I will. They weren't attacking Africans, but they were, they were committing acts of injustice. And uh, so I... I joined them one night, hot fall evening, we put up posters, and then somebody got the bright idea, hey, let's actually go to this house where these Nazi skinheads live and let's put up posters right there. And I being, you know, 20, Youthfully exuberant. Yes, I said, <laughs> sure, let's do it. You know, it seemed very exciting and so forth, and let's, you know, let's stick it to these Nazis. And anyway, so I, uh, you know, we walked down to a house that's really not very far from where, we're, where we are right now. And uh, we kind of masked. We didn't have a plan, but what, the, what, there was a kind of a plan. I already had done a lot of public speaking at that point, so I was asked by this group of people who I didn't, I only knew like one of them because we went to the same high school together. And he said, well, you know, okay, so you'll be one of these group of people who's going to be representing the group in case there's a confrontation. I said, okay. And then when we're standing in front of the house, they said, okay, well, we think that you should be <laughs> the one speaker to represent us. So here I am, one black male, this group, big group of white punkers. So when and the Nazis exactly, come out. Exactly. So that I will be standing in front <laughs> as the bullet catcher. And as it turned out, uh, yeah, a couple of these uh, two or three Nazis came out onto the front porch. Uh, one had a rifle. One had a shotgun. Uh, it was certainly pretty scary. And uh, they said, you know, you, you step one foot on this lawn, you know, we'll, be def we'll defend our property, right? Now, they 
They didn't point their weapons, which would have been an illegal act. But um, it was a very strange moment. And, and I, I want to make it absolutely clear that I'm not talking about bravery, because bravery means that you have enormous fear and you conquer your fear. That is impressive. Uh, then there's just youthful exuberance. And for whatever reason, uh, I should have been scared out of my wits, uh, but I just, it was like stepping, it was like you're an actor, you know what it's like, you step onto a stage, you're nervous before, and then suddenly you're on. And uh, this Nazi who said, you step one foot on this lawn and we'll, we'll finish you off, that kind of thing. I said, so what you're saying is, since we've already agreed we're not going to step on this lawn, that you are going to do nothing. He didn't have any response to that. So then I started to demonstrate, to explain why his worldview was wrong. And I kind of expected that they'd curse at us and swear at us and throw garbage at us. And the damn thing was that these young men who had a hateful, horrible view of the world were probably people who'd been messed up by that world too. You know, they had probably been lied, well, they had been lied to by mm -hmm. adults who wanted to manipulate them. And they'd been given false reasons to explain what was going wrong in the world, blaming it on this ethnic group or that religion. And it was a really strange, bizarre evening, hot autumn evening that could have ended horribly. And then, you know, the police arrived and CFRN, part of CTV News, arrived. And, and, uh, <coughs> and fortunately, and, you know, and we were informed that just us being there as a group more than three, I guess the police have, they, they can arrest you for unlawful assembly, if you're any more than two, as I recall, if they, because they, that's one of their discretionary powers. Because three's a crowd. Yes, and three's company. That's and, true. And John Ritter's on, part of it. John Ritter on was the not other there. Side, yes, yeah. Yeah, nor was Mr. Roper. Although Rope might have been in their, their arsenal I'm of weapons. I'm sure they had yes, some in the exactly. home. So, you know, that was a really bizarre moment, but it, it taught me that, uh, you know, in extreme moments, sometimes you find that you stand up better than you ever would have guessed. Because if somebody had asked me at that time, how, how would you think you would function? I, I, I probably would have said, well, I would have run for the hills, you know? But um, maybe it was deer caught in the headlight, or maybe you just realized at that moment, and I'd say, again, not just me, but, you know, anybody in that moment, you realize, well, you're going to take your stand. And uh, so, yes, uh, you know, that's just one example. But I mean, you know, I also want to point out that, um, you know, I, I've been lucky in that I haven't had to deal with uh, physical repression by the state or by, you know, Nazis or that kind of thing. Beyond that, lots it, of people have in this it, country. Because in, in your radio show, uh, it's called Terror Dome, right? The Terror Dome, yes. Which Terror is a, Dome. It was a reference to a public enemy song called Welcome to the Terror Dome. Yeah. You say some things that if you were in a much more repressive regime, you would be shut down immediately, correct? I think that's true, and I'd like to, just so that, that you know, your statement might conjure up all kinds of images in people's heads what that means. But Hold I mean, it, because we'll get it when we come back from the commercial. You don't take sides with organizations. You take sides with innocent people.